What we're doing today is showing you how to jump power supplies. When you get welders, a lot of them you can jump from 220 to 460 to 575. Uh, that's something you want to look at when you're buying a welder. If you, if you need to do jumping, you want to make sure they do that because some of them don't do that. We've purchased them before and uh, they didn't do that. So we had to focus them just on 220 even though our main lab is 460. The way this works is you have, it looks like a bolt coming through made out of copper and there'll be a line of them. And then this thing right here is just a piece of copper. They put it here and that would represent either 220, 460, or 575. And if you wanted to move it, let's just say this is 220, and let's say 460 was these two, you take this off, put it over here, and, and bolt it on. Uh, how to know what your um, uh, pattern is, there's a couple different ways they do that. They'll have a little diagram right on the machine, or you can always check the manual. The older machines, you pretty much have to check the manual. The newer ones, they usually have some kind of diagram that shows you how to do that. Uh, what we're going to do for welders is an ESOP Big Master 250. We're going to jump that from 220 to 460. Then we're going to go to a Lincoln Power MIG 255. We're going to jump it from 460 to 220. Then we're going to go to a Miller 252. And we're going to jump it from 575 to 460. Uh, that's just because it's brand new and the, it's preset to 575 when we get it. Couple things to remember: don't over tighten uh, the nuts. They just need to be snug. It's copper. It's a lot softer. You can strip it out real easy. Uh, double check your requirements coming from the uh, receptacles out of the wall. You want to make sure that it's actually 460. If you put it on 460 or 220, you're putting it on 220. And last but not least, after you jump it, check the manual, even if it does have a diagram in the welder. When we did the uh, uh, ESOP here. We did it according to what was in the machine, and we, we, we messed something up, and we caught it, and we checked the manual after we already did it. We were fairly certain if we would have went over and plugged that in, it probably would have just tripped a breaker um, or blew a fuse. But we checked the manual, double-checked it, and we had an error in there. So always check the manual after you're done. Um, I'm going to go grab a couple of uh, 460 and 220 plugs. We can show you the difference in the plugs that we actually use. You never want to have the same plug. For 220 is 460 because then somebody can plug it into the wrong um, outlet. So I'll grab the plugs and we'll show you those. This is our standard 220 plug that we use. Pretty simple, three prong, they're straight. Sometimes they have these and they'll be crooked. Um, we have to do a lot of uh, adapters if we go on the road. But this is our standard 220 plug. It's completely different from our 460. That way you can't plug this into 460 and have a disaster. So now we'll go look at the uh, 460 plug we use. All right, this is our 460 plug, and you can see it's completely different from the 220. You plug this in and twist it, it's got little nubs that lock up. You never want to have different power supplies with different voltage requirements that can be interchanged. It's just a bad idea. So now we'll start jumping some welders here. All right, this is an ESOB MIG machine that we're gonna switch from 220 to 460. We took the side panel off. And these are your jumpers, and you can see they have different numbers right on them. All right, these are your little jumpers here. So what we're gonna do, as you can see, it's on 208, 230 right now. We wanna be on 460. So we're gonna take those two jumpers off and line them up where the 460 goes. All right, so we're gonna loosen these bolts up on the 230 here. Just so, 
just for uh, storage purposes. That way you don't lose the one jumper. It only needs one, however. And same thing with the extra nuts and lock washers. Put them on the posts that you just put on them. Just so you don't lose them. Lastly, all you gotta do is snug these babies down. That's all it takes. Now you just gotta put your 460 plug on. Alright, we just consulted our owner's manual and we screwed up on one thing. We forgot to put this jump wire. Over here, it says 460 over here. So that's the last thing we gotta do. And this thing will be ready to go for 460. Right now it's set up for 230. Take this off here. Again, put your extra your uh, nut and your lock washer back on it's for storage. So we'll pull these in here like this. And when you snug them down, you don't gotta torque the ever loving heck out of it. Minimal amount of torque. Since we're over here, so it doesn't fall off. All right, we're ready to put our panel back on. All right, we just plugged this thing in. We're going to turn the on switch on and see if it fires. Sounds good. Should be good to go. All right, we just finished switching up our ESAB Nickmaster T50 from 220 to 460. Now we're going to do a Lincoln Power Mig 255 from 460 to 220. Alright, this machine has a diagram right on it. So it's got the where you want to jump it right on the back of the machine. You just have to move the plate and go to town. You see 460 right here, jump from 2 to 3. We're going to come up here and go 2 to 4, 3 to 1, to make it into 230. Alright, you can see it's on 2 3. That was all, it was 460, so we're going to loosen those up. Take these out. And our diagram says we need to go to 2 4 and 3 1, so we got to loosen up the 4. back Test this 
stop plugging in. Go over here and turn it on. Fires up, we're good to go. So now we'll get on to a uh, Miller that we're going to switch from 220 to 460. Just finished up with our ESOB and our Lincoln. Now we got a Miller, uh, MIGMASTER 252, and we're going to jump this one. It's brand new. And they, the factory set it at 575, so we're going to take it from 575 to 460. All right, you can see right down here, that's where your jumper is in the last two here. If you look up on this little diagram, that's 575. We want to go to 460, so we're going to want to take that, move it over to the second and third peg. If you were going to do 220 or 230, you would put them side by side and leave the last two open. This one's pretty simple. It's just got a little plastic thing that tilts up. So we're going to go ahead and move those over to 460. Okay, so we'll break these all free here. Then we're going to put it on the second one. Third one. thought about getting the drill, but with power tools you might strip this stuff out. You don't want to have it terribly tight. So get all the screws out or nuts out of here. There should be two jumpers. Yeah, there's two jumpers. Just keep them all together so you don't lose them. In case you ever do go to 220. Snug them with the extension bar. I'll just give them a little bit of a torque with the ratchet. And you want to put your extra nuts back on the studs again in case you have to ever change it to 575. They have these little slats in between them that make it really hard to get them started. So now we'll just snuggle them with the finger and then the ratchet. Now just snug them. this back down, put the screw back in, and then we'll plug her in and see if she fires up. Now we're going to take this uh, plug it into our 460 power supply. See if she turns on, make sure everything's good. I can find the switch. If she goes, she lights up, so we're, we're good to go. Go ahead and turn it back off. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to TV Well.